So as promised, Sony A7 III setup guide. So since I've made the last video, Dave Osler's made a menu guide and it's good if you want to get an understanding about where things are and what they are. Maybe watch it first or after this. This guide, however, is going to be about the finer details, getting the most out of this camera, setting it up for run and gun filmmakers and hybrid shooters, some things that you won't find elsewhere on YouTube. And I feel like I've got a really good system that I want to share with you. I've been not accepting shifts at work because I've been living in this menu system because it's got some quirks to it and some really great things, but also some limitations you should be aware of. Let's get into it. Okay, let's talk about memory recall and how it's so important to run and gun shooting. So on memory recall one, I've got my standard stuff. If I'm shooting on a gimbal at 24 frames per second, this is what I shoot on. Just to backtrack for a second, the way you save something as a memory recall is you go into this part, come down here, click that button, and whatever settings that you were on in the mode dial, whether it's for photography or videography, S and Q, just select whichever one you want and click the middle button. I've tweaked the Brandon Lee's picture profile there. I'll just show you where you can find this in the menu. No, no, down one. So here's where you can change the settings. Got highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up. So you're getting a lot of dynamic range in those. Fade, I'm not too sure of that. Um, I've tweaked up the saturation. I'm gonna try and use this profile without any color grading because it looks so nice. It looks even nicer than S-Log color graded, but I just have the opinion, same as Brandon Lee on that one, that I can't get the S-Log 3 looking any better than this one. And perhaps it might have the edge and dynamic range, but I prefer skin tones over, and beautiful colors over the nth degree and dynamic range. You can just see all the settings here that I've put in. You'll find all these settings in Dave Osler's video if you want to go through that exhaustive menu guide. But I, like I said earlier, I'm not going to repeat it because I'm original. Next, uh, my 120p setting. So the same, just hut shutter speed is higher and 120p, everything's the same. And note that if you are going don't get confused by this proxy file and format. I'm not using proxies. So just remember, if you're using these picture profiles like I am, you will need to change everything. You change a smidge in the audio setting, you bring it up from 25 to 26, you're gonna to need to change all the settings in every single one and you need to change them from the movie mode dial or the S and Q dial as you'll see a bit later on. So it's a tedious thing, but the rationale is, is you work hard to play easy. So when you go out and film, it's gonna be so easy and fun, but this is a bit of hard work. I will admit that. It's been a hassle to set this up, but it's also been kind of fun. I hope you're having fun too. Let's move on. Mode three. So what's going on here? We've got one four thousandth of a second shutter speed. Can you guess what this might be? Yes, it's the Catalyst Browse gyro setting. So here we've had to change to XAVC-S. This is the lesser quality one. For some reason, the H.265 
file format does not work with the Catalyst Browse software for some stupid reason. That is not a new piece of software. They should have been worked out all the kinks by now. Um, but whatever, this is quite similar to be honest. If you put these two compression formats back to back, then there would not be much in it. And it's certainly not like matching two different cameras, not at all like that. They'll look the same. So don't worry about that. Yeah, so you want the shutter speed very high. The lower the shutter speed, the more movement artifacts you'll get in your video. But we'll demonstrate this in our up and coming stabilization test. Next mode. So here we've got just a 60p version of mode dial one, the 24 frames per second. The only other thing we've changed is we've got active mode standard on the 60 frames per second. Let's see what's on M2. Before I go into this, these M1s, M2, M3, M4, you'll need to just shift the mode dial to either one, two or three from one of the others or from anything and then click across with the circle selector shifter right and left buttons whatever you want to call it another thing before i forget is that this does not write it to the onboard memory system it writes them in to the memory card that's in slot one and you will have to do that for both cards or all the cards that you use for whatever reason that's how it works actually that might not be true. Let's just have a look. All right, you can do it to slot two, but it's one or the other. It's probably easier to just change it, change your card out rather than swapping back and forth. But I don't know, maybe not. Just go in here, boom, change it to there. Yeah, I wasn't doing that before, so there's a lot to this camera. Moving on. I'll explain what I put on M2. So this is, you have to set this to the S and Q mode shift while you're setting this up. And from there, you'll also need to change the codec. So this one, so all the, all the settings, all the frame rates and the recording settings, you do all that here. You change everything there if that wasn't made clear before. All these ones can be changed here. I put them up in the quick menu setting just because I was using them so much when I was changing them around. So this is what I've got for my menu one. I don't, I don't think I'll really use it otherwise. So if you don't have the new Sony CF Express Type A cards and you want 250 frames per second, You'll have to do it like this. I'm on movie settings. Yeah, you click that 24. You can do 10 bit without a CF Express Type A card, which is, I didn't think you could. And you'll need to go. I've set my frame rates here, but you can go and, and jump in the other menu like that. And boom, that's how you do it. If you had a CF Express Type A, yeah, and here you would be choosing that one. And as you can see, because I don't have that CF Express Type A card, it won't let me do it. So we'll go back here. And even if you had a CF Express Type A card, it only give you, I somehow looked into it and before it had another error message and it was only like 89 megabits more and the same what's that 39 more so it's not that big of a difference and same if you wanted to get the highest version of 120p you would have to do it through this way and yeah you can't do it because i don't have c express type a card and the good thing about these memory recall buttons if you change anything on it all you have to do is click the one selector go back to it and everything goes back to how you originally programmed it. So you can mess up all the settings and experiment and 
if you're in this setting in one of these memory recall buttons it's not going to stay there and you're going to have to find everything else and put it back to the way it was like if you were on the standard movie dial no audio on this one just remember that m3 we've got our time lapse mode so kind of the same thing needs to be set in s and q mode we can set this all up like our standard um, one two three uh, xavc hs modes spit out at 24 frames per second so if we wanted to do a day to night time lapse it's only the aperture that will change and the iso will also kick in if it needs to holy grail time lapse if you're interested i'll just put that um, settings back up on the screen one frame per second shutter speed at one second okay M4 what I've got this on is aperture priority same as my regular main one mode selector one except instead of shutter speed priority I've got aperture reason being if we want some shallow depth of field and don't want to use the ND filters and we usually won't I'll only use those ND filters when we want to do a time lapse in the daytime and we want some motion blur you can use real smart motion blur if you want motion blur in post I've done a video on that you can click the link I have in the top right hand corner there if you're interested but yeah this is this will be our shallow depth of field mode but in saying that i put up the back because i don't really care too much about shallow depth of field i don't need it in every shot like other people seem to we've also made a video on the overuse of bokeh so i'm not going to go into that either but we do like to use it sometimes custom key settings we'll come back to the photo ones iso on wheel one if you've had a habit of bumping it in the past maybe have an on button as your custom key but I don't bump mine um, face priority in multimetering sometimes you just want to protect the highlights and having a bit of shadows on the face or having a lower exposure on the face is okay metering mode same thing really selecting which areas to prioritize in your exposure am fm selector toggles steady shot yeah so that selects between the active standard or off i keep mine standard because i use a gimbal a lot where are we at now display menu you can change this to whatever you want i just put this as so i could go into this my custom menu one because these are the things that i was using the most to change my memory recall stuff which is the best thing i love about this camera and of all the options that you get and the fact that you can make them all just so quickly changeable from one to the other i just love it so much hey it's it's like a big boy's toy hey no baby basics like the canon cripple menus anyway <laughs> let's not rub salt in the wound the poor camera that can't even get it to work without hacking the shit out of it let's move on we won't go there any further switch focus area sometimes you want to hone in on a focus area there could be a lot of foreground elements and you you need this maybe wide is not working with the touch tracking which to be honest ain't all that great it's not as sticky as like this eye eye autofocus this is great but the touch to focus i hope there's an update for it because it's a little bit glitchy here we've got zoom which is clear image zoom so what you need to do for that is just click the middle button and use one of the scroll wheels or dials to zoom in and out it's very quality you've got zebra levels i'll just show you how to change it there boom changed if I wanted to have zebras on or off it's easy but you've got a lot of different um, things you can put on these keys all these different things 
It's very, very customizable, and that's what I like. I like things to be customizable. You can just memorize a few things and then boom, you can just create. I love that about these cameras. Here I have a second ISO button. The reason why you want an actual toggle button for the ISO and not just the wheel, because the wheel will change it like this. Put it on auto or you can select it manually. The toggle button can change how the auto works. I'll show you why, because the minimum ISO you can change. You can change it to when this second ISO, the second gain, the whatever you want to call it, the dual ISO kicks in. So ISO will never go below 10,000 where it is a bit grainy. Monitor brightness, so you, it doesn't show you on this, but it will change it for um, extra bright in the sunlight. Where are we? White balance, yeah. I don't usually use anything other than white balance outside and run and gun, but say if we do a video inside and in our studio, which is a room in the place where we live, then I'd use a custom white balance and set it up for the, the consistent, repeatable environment. Um, but otherwise, this camera has a new auto white balance sensor at the front and it's very good so why not take advantage of new technology the days of auto white balance not being a great thing are gone because this one is excellent auto exposure lock toggle so this is why we used shutter speed priority and not manual we used to use manual but we've found that we can recreate a lot of the manual benefits so if you don't want exposure shifts you can just press that button, see that star in the bottom right hand corner, that will keep the exposure the same. You can put an ND filter on it if you want shallow depth of field just like you would in manual. It also lets you not blow things out. So if, if you expose for a dark area and you go in some light, if you're on manual exposure it'll blow out because you might have auto ISO on manual and if you go darker, the ISO will help you, but if you go lighter and you've exposed for the dark, you'll just blow out. Or you can use aperture priority. Some people prefer that because they like shallow depth of field all the time. But moving on, and the lens button, I just don't use it. Here with the custom key settings for photo, we've got um, ISO, same place, interval shooting on the side, so if we want to do a time lapse, in photo mode, that's where we do it. Um, so here's, this is great, and this hasn't been on other Sony cameras. Well, it wasn't on the a7 III, it perhaps might have been on the a7 IV, but I don't know about that. When you set this up to how you want it, I'll just go into manual mode. When you've set this up, you can have these memory recall settings as buttons. So if I'm in a spot where I want to get a heap of different snaps of Elise and I want to work the camera a little bit, I want to try a low ISO or a shallow depth of field or a large depth of field, then I can use these three settings. So, and you can change what mode you're on. So I'm pressing C3 right now and See, it's changing the f-stop. Now I'm pressing C1, and we're going to um, shutter speed priority in a real low shutter speed. I've really set it up for night because night photos can be a lot more problematic. Night photos require a lot more settings and finesse. So when I put these on, what I usually like to do is have it in single mode shooting. But when I put these on, up here it's changing it to multiple shots. So if I just want a machine gun at that setting, machine gun in this setting, machine gun at this setting, I'm sure to get something that I'll like. Because Elise doesn't like to just stay in pose in the one spot. Doesn't think of herself as a model, even though she's beautiful. And it's like it holds the shutter half down too. So you can change the f-stop, 
you can change the shutter speed, you can change the drive mode, you can change so many different things. I love this setting, love it. So let's move on. And I've just put the peaking display select down the bottom. Again, I find that button, I easily hit it with my hand, so I don't want anything that switches on and off. I want a toggle there or something that's not so important, not could ruin a shot. Focus standard. This kind of works like back button focusing. So yeah, I like that. I haven't done anything with that. Drive mode, the same what the camera comes stock with, same there. Monitor brightness, same as on video. Switch to silent mode. Yeah, there might be times where we want to be a bit sneaky. Focus mode. That's certainly something that I don't want to be a switch. It's too accident prone for me. You might be different. Now let's just go through the menu and I want to just point out a few things that are remarkable that maybe Dave missed or didn't get quite right. This is something that come to mind. All these should be on auto. Yeah, you know, you shoot in RAW and we only shoot in RAW for photography, but with video it's different and there's some distortion compensation like in the Sony lenses and I know the 17 to 28 millimeter Tamron lenses and probably the other Tamron lenses also really benefit from this. They've got some distortion, especially wide angle, and this corrects it really good in video, not just in JPEGs, corrects it really good in video. All these, put all these stuff on order. They might come as off as standard, but yeah, definitely do that. Grid line type, I like to use rule of thirds. Uh, this is something that's important. Exposure compensation. So I'll just go back out to the main screen. So we've got S log in this movie profile and the standard movie dial. This is just for when I want to experiment with S log three. As you can see, the compensation dial for exposure is plus two. And then we go into our memory call one, it's on zero. And then we go to photography, it's minus 0.7. So how do you do that? This is how you do that. So in photography, you set this as minus seven and you put maintain and you go select back to the movie mode. You go in here and you select this as plus two as I've done there. And you select maintain. That way you don't have to be mucking around with the exposure compensation dial like we did so much when we're in Japan, when we're just like taking photos and videos all day and, and we would forget it sometimes and we had underexposed HLG3 and if you know what that looks like, it's not pretty. It's very murky and dusty. This is a good way to just make our life even easier. I want it to be easier than using a phone. And if I want it complicated, if I want to do something a bit more technical, I can do that too. But as a stock standard, I want it to be easier than my phone. Let's continue. Set your zebras up depending on what profile. Let's just set this one to, now I've got this um, 94 one for the Leeming Lart update for the A7S III. Let me just show you an extra bit that you need to know for uh, that exposure compensation setting for it to work. Lucky I didn't forget this, I would have been made at myself. Where are we? Yeah, here we go. Different settings for movie. You need to tick the appropriate ones or all of them for it to be different, like to get that exposure compensation working for you. For some reason I wanted to change that exposure compensation. I would just go full mode and, uh, and do it that way, but I don't want to mess with the exposure compensation the way I work. 
Uh, and that's about it. So I hope that was helpful for you. Hope you've got some ideas about what's possible in this camera. Now you know how to get the most out of this camera for run and gun filmmaking and hybrid shooting. Hope you have a really great time with it. Watch this video again if you want to. There's some like Gerald Undone level information in this menu system. Check out Dave Oss's video if you haven't already. He probably explains things better than I can. Give this video a like if you found it helpful. Also comment, tell me if you think I've got anything wrong or a better idea. It's all about adjustments this camera. The possibilities are endless, almost. And yeah, click subscribe also if you haven't already. We don't have Patreon, we don't have merch. That's the only way you can support us. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.